maybe we, we can start by saying that today cars become more and more uh, connected devices focused on software, AI, data, and um, sort of smartphone on wheels, if you will. And um, then user experience becomes a key factor in competition and uh, in the overall game of the industry. And um, user experience, we can talk about uh, driving monitoring, um, safety, in-cabin sensing, personalization, uh, content, uh, e-commerce one day, who knows? So my first question to the panelists would be, um, maybe let's start by the, a bird's eye. What is your vision towards the future? Where, where are we heading with these vehicles? So maybe, Peter, if you can start. It will be great. Thank you, Iris. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and um, I think it's it's worth to discuss this topic because uh, we, the OEMs and the Tier One, we are facing, let's say, challenging times, maybe for decades. So uh, it's it's absolutely necessary to exactly know where. We want to go, and therefore you need some real strategic, yeah, let's say alignment, and uh, especially on the digital topic, it's necessary to really have the dedicated focus. So if you are talking about in-cabin, you, you call it, uh, we showed on the CES 2023 um, our, let's say, digital vision, we call it Vision D, uh, and therefore I think it's, uh, the maybe some of you have seen it, uh, so we call it the, your ultimate companion. So the device becomes not only for sure connected, however, it's, it gets more, let's say, uh, a part, let's say a partner. It sounds a little bit strange, but um, yeah, that's what, what we are focusing in. UI gets a crucial point, because there, your brand identity is something where it comes real. So this is something we really have to focus on it. And for BMW, it's definitely clear. We have, uh, let's say, a long-term roadmap, and it's not only adding components by components. Yeah? You have maybe seen the mixed reality slider, the P-Hood vision, or whatever. But to make it as an experience is something crucial and something for success. Holger, can you uh, give your... Yeah, thanks, uh, Iris, also for having me here at the EcoMotion. It's a pleasure. Tel Aviv is wonderful. I want to apply somehow here <laughs> to a position. No, uh, Peter, absolutely right. So uh, we, we at Conti, we have this saying, uh, quote, UX is the new horsepower. So that means basically, previously, you know, you, you decided your car based on the motor, but now it is getting more and more crucial really to have a fantastic user experience in the car to have also the ecosystem behind, and that's for Generation Z and so on coming. Now, that those are the decision points to, to buy cars, and that's why we see almost all OEMs investing a lot into this user experience and moving ahead to, let's say, of course, make the differentiation, that's what uh, he said, and um, but also to, to meet the user demands and, and uh, let's say, to really make an, an impression to, to the future buyers. Yeah? So um, we are also going with that as a tier one. We, we try to follow and also, of course, kind of suggest new ideas. Um, what I personally see, and, and you mentioned it, and I like, by the way, this Vision D. Who doesn't? Yeah, it's perfect. It's great. Um, when, when, when I'm talking today to my car, I feel, OK, you don't understand me. You know, it's, there is still a lot of way to go to make that per perfect. And I think when, when I look at the vision, what needs to be there, it is definitely kind of uh, conversational AI and an intelligent voice control so that you have really a kind of uh, great uh, connection to your car. What, what is also necessary, I mean, it would be wonderful to have really the car knowing you, your context perfectly, 100%. And based on that, get personalization. And be it in the car, but also connected to the outside. So that's one thing definitely we need to look for together, startups, OEMs, and tier ones to move forward. And the, the second thing what I want to mention is augmented reality. It was also part of the Vision D. 
where we connect basically the real world in graphics to the field of view of the user and with evolving of you know new technologies on displays head up displays but also other displays there will be a lot of use cases coming up and i'm confident that this will come and, and we need to focus on that that's very interesting um, maybe also let's let's hear maybe Ilya. what do you see from the bo both perspectives as a tier one and you know now and a startup of course, of course of course yeah so, so thank you for having us here, for Ecomotion, for hosting the panel. Thank you, first of all. And yeah, the in-cabin world is now a very, very excited world to be in. And it's divided to be, a, as it started, as to be a safety one. It's mandatory for the requirement, for the regulation. And move to the comfort as well. So both of, both of the world are interesting. But first of all, you need to address the basic safety requirements, like child passage detection, cryptic detection, to monitor the vital sign, and this is actually what we are doing, okay, in uh, Harman. We have our ready care approach to do this as well. On the top of this, we have, like uh, my colleagues here mentioned, it's like uh, we have uh, comfort features, but you need to fit the data into these features, okay? So you need to have a suitable sensor and sort of layer of algorithm to have this data. And in, in order to create a comfort in cabin e e environment, that's suitable for you, that is your, you know, your second place, your home, your second home or office. That's, that's, that was my impression when I heard you talk that um, I, it will be an extension of my home, of myself. It will be just a very smooth, transparent passage from one place to another. Tal, maybe. So to add, because a lot was already said and we're short in time, so I'll simply add that on top of context, uh, that we see uh, coming to is uh, the concept of uh, prediction, predictive uh, user interface that understands what I'm about to do or need to do based on the context and serve me the right options um, um, and customizations. Uh, but beyond that, there is another aspect that is sort of a meta aspect to the user experience, and that's that thanks to the connectivity and the agile nature of software, we'll be able to uh, have new UI every week, every month, depending on the uh, cadence that is set. So just like a smartphone as you started, we'll start seeing new features streaming into the cabin, leveraging the same uh, hardware, but uh, still getting us excited every time and you when we get into the car. So we're going to be um, abducted to the car, <laughs> like we, with, a, with a smartphone. And basically it's quite frightening. It's, it's amazing, but it's also a bit frightening. <laughs> no. I wouldn't say so. No. Because I think technology things will solve problems we, Yes, for us. And mm -hmm. we don't need to take care about. So we have already a lot of things mentioned here. Yeah, it's con conversationally. I, if we look what chat GPT is possible, I'm, I'm fully with you. The voice control will dramatically boost within the next years. Or augmented reality will change the way, the way we design we user interface from 2D to 3D. So there's still a way to go, and that's, uh, that's I think, I'm, I'm believing in a bright future, so I'm not frightened. Great. <laughs> Good. So maybe let's drill down a little bit and see this is where, where we want to get. How, what are the trends nowadays? What do you see as trends in the industry nowadays? And maybe also touch on the relations. What can uh, startups or innovative companies uh, can bring to the giant OEMs and tier ones and the relations between those two worlds? Yeah, I can start. So um, I think uh, as, as we have, you know, all this data in the car uh, being available, we need to do something with it and we can make really uh, a great thing out of it. So we need, out of my view, basically, and, and that's affecting the industry also here to, to set on partnerships. So uh, we need to connect to the, to the uh, let's say, uh, different partners who uh, really, let's say, connect into the verticals and, and uh, kind of um, work on these uh, fields where the tier one and the OEM do not have the power to work on. So uh, this is something where we need the, the startups to, to come in and uh, bring this together. We are more or less, I see us as a tier one, as an aggregator, 
to kind of work with multiple tier ones out of different verticals, bring that together as a kind of critical mass and to provide this kind of uh, service then to the OEMs. That's basically... So it's more mu mutual. No upstream, downstream, just uh, on an equal level. Um, so um, we see already starting to have uh, more sensors, more AI in the vehicle, um, uh, and that will all serve the future context as it builds a picture of uh, as many uh, sensors as possible, uh, vision, voice, radar, um, and beyond that, um, we also see a, a trend of more screens. So we have the IVI, we have the instrument cluster, we have now the head-up display coming, and also the passenger screen in some uh, uh, new cars. And all these uh, make the interaction, uh, to a certain extent, more complex, and you need to build a, a more holistic experience around all these to work together. So it's another challenge. Um, because there's, you can't reach and touch all the screens. There is a limit to the number of joysticks you can have on the steering wheel. So you need to come with a more a crisp a experiences that actually serve you the information at the right time rather than you chasing after the actions. And even to make it more complex, uh, it's, it's not only about, uh, we touched the topic of ecosystems already. Mm -hmm. So I think it doesn't make sense that every OAM or first tier creates is own ecosystem. The, the, yeah, the challenge is how to adapt different ecosystems because uh, if you drive a car, for sure you have, I don't know, some have Android phones, some others have iPhones and whatever out there. We want to have these ecosystem present in the in-cabin experience as well. So uh, the, the challenge is how can we create an, yeah, an user experience which is on the one hand, open to other ecosystems. On the other hand, saves your private and personal data you, are, you give to your car. So that's even, even a challenge regarding designing uh, the in-cabin experience. So you mean design, the design uh, also in view of, of anticipating the data and the privacy and the safety? So combining everything together, that's a real challenge. And at the end, it, it comes to, let's say, how trustworthy is the UI you build it, yeah? Because if we are talking about prediction, if we are talking about uh, artificial intelligence, if we are talking about large language model, you give things from your privacy to someone else, and then it comes to the point of trustworthiness. To, to Ilya. Um, yeah, just maybe to add it on the top of you know working startup and the tier ones and then OEMs moving towards the production. Yeah, it's of course startups they always act like uh, first responders to any problem they have a phase solution. But you need to work in the t tandem of with perfectly tier one. It's like you know it's a good example what we had with Harman. Yeah, as a perfect one it worked very well. So in order to bring it to the manufacturing, to have the experience of the regulation, etc. Because you might have a nice product as a prototype, do evaluation, screening, etc., etc. But if you would not be able to get into the into the production and in the cost that the OEM will ask you for, it's worth nothing eventually. So there is the collaboration as well. It's a huge uh, aspect here: data privacy and everything you said. Should to be able to keep and or in the tier one known, for example, Harman, we know how to do this and not probably the startup not capable and don't have the resources to actually do this. So we must have this, okay, working th together. And then we actually can, uh, can, can create the perfect sensing cabin and together with tier one and startups, a one-stop shop for every cabin solution. So could work perfectly with the, for the OEMs eventually. Um. We don't have too much time, so I wanted to uh, may maybe, Holger, when we discussed, you, talk, you talked a little bit about the challenge of validating uh, the needs or the wishes uh, of the users uh, and, and how the industry is coping with that. So can you elaborate a bit on, on this? Yeah, I think that's one of the most important points. I mean, in the end, uh, you, if you design a UI or an HMI or whatever, then you need to have a deep understanding on the user needs. If, if you don't have that, then you will fail anyway. So 
that's the key point number one and the challenge also because it's buff it's across multiple generations you need to consider ethnicities and so on so um, and here let's say point number one really a challenge but needs to be done uh, otherwise you fail the validation on the other side also you have an idea how to implement a UI or to bring a new feature in how do you make sure that this is something what the people want so you need to have techniques uh, doing user clinics or you know other topics to really make sure that this is a, a feature that will fly. And that's also what we at Conti are doing, so both sides to have a strong HMI team, ergonomic uh, guys and, and other HMI, let's say specialists, to make sure that um, we have the right design for a feature. On the other side also um, Ergo Lab, where we verify and validate those kind of ideas. So that's how we are doing it. And I guess similarly at the OEMs, uh, you have methods like this, right? Yeah, to make an UI really, let's say, an integrated one, and to follow the our vision of an ultimate companion, you need a deep understanding of the whole stack. So the HMI is, let's say, on the top of the software stack, but at the end, you have to you have to, you have not to do everything by your own. However, you have to have a deep understanding of the whole software stack down to chip level and even deeper. Otherwise, you will not able to create this vision of, let's say, an updatable privacy uh, car and so on. Otherwise, it will not work. And this is something which can only be done with partnerships. It's no, if you want to create this as a BMW OS or so, I think this is not the way to go. We need a broader, a broader cooperation on these, uh, let's say, techniques handling a software stack. That's what I would like to mention. Any other challenges? May I add, yeah, because I hear it's, first of all, it's wonderful to hear about the need and the understanding of the um, importance of the partnerships. Um, and I think that you come from organizations that are a bit more unique because the industry traditionally is very siloed. And when we work with OEMs and tier ones, we see often the organizational structure in the way of the partnership. There is the ADAS department, there is the IVI department. Sometimes the technology can do wonderful things for both, uh, but yet only one of them issues the RFQ, and these are the boxes that need to be ticked. So I think that some of the challenge is also, and, and we see certain organizations trying to change, like placing someone as a head of, of a UX business or someone uh, in charge of innovation and looking holistically at things, but uh, on the practical level, we're still in a challenging world at that, uh, from that perspective. Yeah. To add it here, it's, uh, yeah, I know, Thursday, yeah, I know, so it will be first yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> just to add it here, it's very, very important to collaborate with the, all the chain, with the tier one startup, tier one OEMs, in the stage of development already. Then you're getting the right requirement, the right key people, and you'll be able to, to develop the right product and the right cost, and eventually you will be awarded. Okay. And even fast, because yes, we have to be fast. Yes, 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 exactly, because I have any timelines. So, and this is exactly, you know, what we... And ChatGPT yeah. is, is chasing? Yes, yes, ChatGPT, but we're lucky we don't have a hardware version of ChatGPT, so we have something to, to, to do. So it's exactly what we actually had to say, added, the added value of Harman to all this chain, because we have all this connection, strategy, and the resources to do it. Thank you very much for your time and for the inputs and very interesting uh, talk. Uh, I don't think we have time for questions from the audience. But maybe they can catch us afterwards and if anyone has questions, you're welcome. <laughs>